I'm working with this bed frame in Alibre, and I would like to insert a 2x4 support. Now, ordinarily, we may have to go and model a 2x4. However, version 27 has a great solution to make things easy. We have a Libre toolbox up here. This is a toolbox of standard parts that can be dynamically configured to meet your needs, as well as it is driven by Excel data, and you can add your own custom parts uh, pretty easily. The library will be updated very shortly with a very large number and variety of parts, but in the meantime, feel free to be able to make your own parts which we'll talk through in this video. If I click on a Libre toolbox and I want to insert a two x four, I have some samples. I'll go to lumber and let me open my common lumber and configure and insert. I can click to place the part and I have certain sizes that I can choose from. I'll go with a two x four and perhaps I want to set the length as 83 and a half. 83.5 and the uh, lumber is updated to my specification. So I've got a standard size 2x4 at whatever length I want and I simply click save to save out a copy of this part uh, to, into my assembly. And there we have it. A Libre toolbox allows a variety of parts to be configured in a variety of ways. If I choose a more complex example and I go to my fastener I can configure a socket head by choosing the screw size, choosing the nominal length, choosing the thread class, and then I can save with a description and part number if I'd like to. I can save that out. So let's talk about how to create our own parts for the Alibre toolbox. To start off, I'll actually go to Microsoft Excel where this data is pulled from. So here I have a blank Excel document and let's say I'd like to configure angle iron. What are the things I care about when it comes to angle iron? I'll go with height, width, and length. I can even add root radius. Now notice I have a space there. We want to avoid using spaces and so I'm gonna use an underscore in place of a space. From here, I can type in a variety of angle irons that I'd be interested in having in my library. For instance, I'll go with one that has a height of 125 millimeters by 75 by a length of, I'll go with a standard 100. I'll go with a root radius of three, and I should probably specify my thickness as well. We'll do a thickness of seven. I can make my next angle iron have a height of 125 by 75. Same length, same root radius, but this time we'll have a thickness of eight. Same part, but different thickness. And you'll notice, and what is very important, is to have every row have at least one thing in it that's unique. If we have duplicated rows, that undermines the point of a standard library, and it may cause the sheet to not work right. So. I'll continue on adding my sizes. So I've created my values here. And again, I'll stress, uh, don't use spaces. Make sure that these are the real value. Do not have equations in our values. And don't have any external um, items like a period or a decimal point that aren't part of our data. And now let's, uh, let's save this out. All right, with our sheet done and with it saved in wherever our toolbox location is, I'll close this and go back to Alibre. So here in Alibre, uh, we want to go to Utilities. We'll add part from Spreadsheet. And then I go and find the spreadsheet that I just saved. So I pulled up my angle iron spreadsheet and I'm, I put all my dimensions in as millimeters. You can change your units from here if you prefer feet, inches, or whichever that you've made your spreadsheet in. From here, we are brought to the select columns page and I can choose uh, how I want my user to uh, parse through this. For instance, I want my user to select height first. So I'll put one on height. And then the second thing I want my user to edit is width. 
So we're going to say 2 on width. Next one, I want them to specify a length, but I don't want them to choose it from the chart because I only have 100s in my spreadsheet. I want them to input a length for their own. So that's the first thing that I'll have them input on their own with their own number is length. And I'll put a 1 under input order. And then root radius, I don't even want them to edit. That should be just whatever the spreadsheet says. And then the length, I want them to edit, or the thickness rather, I want them to edit third. So we have three things for them to filter in the specific order I've set, and then one thing for them to input their own number with. I'll click on Populate Equations, and it takes me to a part modeling interface, and I will model an angle iron with the dimensions from the sheet. I'll activate a sketch, and I'll choose my XY plane. And I'm modeling a simple angle iron here. I know that I would like this to be horizontal as well as this. I'll choose a tangent arc. Tangent. Perfect. So this will be uh, our starting point for our angle iron. And the first thing, maybe I want to constrain my thickness. So I'll choose something that selects thickness, and I have all my equations checked as favorite. We'll go with thickness right here. And then we're going to say equal. And so now we know that thickness is constrained. Let's do height next. Choose a dimension. Click on my f of x. Stand on height and say OK. We're going to go with width now. Then we want to make sure that our root radius is defined. Say OK to that. There we have a piece of angle iron from our library. So we'll deactivate my sketch. We'll extrude. We'll click on f of x. We'll make sure that we have our length. So we've essentially uh, just told Alibre what dimensions to use where when we go to configure the part. So we'll save this, and we're going to save this wherever we saved our spreadsheet within the parts library. So I've got my uh, bed here, and if I go to Alibre Toolbox, and I want to insert a piece of angle iron, then I can see that now, uh, because I saved it within my toolbox library, I have an angle iron folder, and I can select my angle iron. So we can configure and insert. I'll place my angle iron here, and I can choose between a wide variety of heights. I'll go with something like 100. We have two options for our width. I think we only have six for our thickness. And our length, we can make it whatever we want. I'll go with 900 millimeters. We can save that, and when we save that, we save that wherever we save our other assembly parts. This is being configured as a part for the assembly, so we'll save it with the assembly. No need to save it where the toolbox is. With that being saved, we have a configured part for assembly, and each time we click on a Libre toolbox and configure a part, we're going to be saving a lot of time from trying to model it manually or update an already modeled part and saving as. Um, let's talk about the Libra Toolbox for a second. So I have a folder called Samples that contains some ANSI parts, lumber, fastener. And this angle iron is a generic folder. If I open up the folder structure in Explorer and take a look at our folders, if I go to Lumber, within the Lumber folder we have a file called Thumb. This is an SVG file, and so if we insert an SVG file called thumb within the lumber folder, that will be the thumbnail for lumber. So you can make your own thumbnails uh, in this folder structure with your own SVG files. We're very excited about a Libre Toolbox. Again, these are dynamically configurable parts that are driven from Excel data. You can add your own custom part, as we've just done in the video with our angle iron, 
and uh, huge amounts of parts will be updated in this library very shortly. Thank you for watching. We're excited to see how you'll use this tool, and we'll see you in the next video.